Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome, everybody, for this panel, a wonderful panel we will have today. Uh, this will be uh, presented by my friend Christina Nader. Uh, she's from Google, but she didn't manage to come uh, to Delft, unfortunately. So I'll be um, uh, making her uh, place, being her place. Uh, so I want to introduce uh, three uh, wonderful and very uh, productive uh, researchers in the field of computer graphics. And for this uh, diversity panel, we have chosen the theme of women in computer graphics. So uh, they will convince, them, convince us about the importance of women's uh, work in computer graphics. So just a small introduce, uh, int uh, introducement of these of this, uh, wonderful panelists. So uh, Zarin Yumak is from Utrecht University, close from here. She is an assistant professor in Human Centered Computing Group at the Information and Computing Science Department. And she's the scientific director of the Motion Capture and Virtual Reality Labs uh, founded, that was founded in EDA Committee and, sorry, founding member of the EDA Committee of her department. She has 15 years of experience in socio interactive 3D digital humans. Her last, latest work focuses on generative AI methods for motion synthesis, in particular, no, non verbal behaviors such as facial expressions, gestures, and gaze. She'll speak a little bit more during his talk. Uh, then we have uh, Professor Seren Kademi. She's from here. She's <laughs> from Delft University. And uh, she's assistant professor in the Architecture and Built Environment, ABE, and co-director of the A A AI DAPT lab, AI for, the AI for Design Analysis and Optimization in Architecture and the Built Environment. She has a long curriculum, and among different things, she was honored by the research in the, res uh, the, research in the residence fellow for the Royal Library of the Netherlands, working on visual, visual recognition for children's book collections. Um, so she's also a lot of uh, interesting and uh, uh, remarkable works. And finally, uh, Noshaba Chema, she is a PhD candidate at Max Planck Institute for Informatics and researched at the EFKI. She's dealing with animation for 3D characters using AI, computer games, for computer games, films, and interacting with humans. So uh, thank you very much for being here, uh, all of you three, and we are delighted with this uh, uh, panel. I promise that we, since we have a very strict time for lunch, we will finish uh, exactly at 12.30, okay? <laughs> All right, so uh, the, for the panel, I have selected, we have selected um, four questions uh, for topics that we will uh, let you talk about. Uh, but if we have time enough, at the end, we may open for comments for the audience. And so my first topic uh, will be, uh, um, uh, first of all, I will, what are some exciting things you are working with right now? So in order to present and introduce yourself, maybe you can uh, talk about that. Uh, so in order to follow some more criteria further, let's uh, perhaps start with seniority. <laughs> and, and, and Professor um, Zeri maybe can start talking about it. Thanks a lot, Esteban. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, <coughs> everyone, and uh, nice to meet this audience. Uh, well, admittedly, this is not the main conference that I usually attend, so a lot of the faces here are uh, new uh, for me. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's very, very nice to be here today and talk about uh, women in computer graphics and animation. Um, but I, I'm looking at the audience and I don't really see many, <laughs> many women on the audience, just to start with, <laughs> with that. Um, my background is um, uh, from computer science. I start with, started with uh, AI algorithms, maybe fifth. 20 years ago, yeah, um, and I did my PhD in a graphics uh, VR uh, lab uh, where I first uh, yeah, got introduced to graphics uh, topics, uh, and I'm mainly working on in the area of 3D digital humans. Uh, I earlier also worked on social robots, so in general, socially interactive virtual characters that are yeah, game characters or uh, other type of um, embodied entities that can socially interact with, with people. So this is quite an interdisciplinary area combining uh, AI, machine learning, uh, deep learning and graphics uh, techniques. Um, so my latest work is really focusing on data-driven approach like a lot of people uh, that is working on deep learning algorithms. Um, so I'm developing um, deep learning driven uh, algorithms for generating um, animation for uh, game characters. 
Um, I'm mainly focusing on nonverbal behavior. So that means facial animations, gestures like that is happening in a social interactive context, or gaze behavior for, for characters uh, to make these characters more believable, more um, yeah, uh, with social for, uh, presence in VR or in, in, in games. Um, so for this, what we are doing is combining latest um, uh, deep learning algorithms. We collect data in the motion capture lab. We are working with uh, motion capture data mainly. Uh, but of course, there are challenges in this area because um, yeah, collecting data is not uh, the most easiest thing. Uh, when you, even though you have all the setup, it's a very tedious uh, process. Um, and we are also looking into um, constructing data from computer vision, using computer vision methods and uh, 3D construction methods. Um, um, I'm in general teaching uh, pattern recognition, deep learning, computer animation uh, topics, um, but I'm um, um, mainly focusing on the social interactive part, even though I also do some work like regarding lo locomotion, for example, or other type of animations. I think that would be... A Start nice, here. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I have a lot of questions, but I, I'm not yes. going to make it <laughs> now. Okay, Sarah, please. Uh. Uh, thanks for the introduction and uh, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm happy to see you all here. Um, <coughs> uh, my name is Sarah Kademi, and uh, I'm a, my background is computer science, but I'm working at the Faculty of Architecture and the Built Environment here. Uh, I think. If I go really back in time, I started with uh, statistical signal processing. It was uh, I was doing my PhD. It was around 2013 when deep learning really took off, and it was really disturbing, uh, I have to say. So I started looking at all this machine learning, pattern recognition literature, and it was quite obvious to me that I really want to move into that direction. It was. Um, uh, sort of the, the pointer to the future of data-driven whatever algorithms. So um, all started from there and uh, I found images and videos and visual data fascinating because of the high di dimensional nature uh, of this data. Uh, so I started working uh, on a computer vision lab here at TU Delft. And at the same time, uh, I was very much interested into look, looking into the data. Because uh, as Zarin also mentioned, um, with all this data-driven AI algorithm, you have uh, to understand the type of data that is used to train and to develop these kind of models. And data by itself, um, it's a bit different than technology to me. So uh, technology is very technical matter, however data is uh, social, uh, technical matter. So you have to understand the context of the data and people who are actually working with data and generating and curating this data. Uh, so uh, that was basically the point of uh, the introduction to the world of uh, architecture. Uh, we had a, a common project together with the Faculty of Architecture um, uh, for uh, understanding the visual data uh, from architectural design, uh, architectural drawings, uh, buildings, images of the buildings, uh, in the co context of urban design, for example, uh, street view images, satellite uh, views, all these kind of uh, visual data uh, is there and they are trying to understand it and also uh, um, generation is, uh, I think, very important and kind of a trendy part of computer vision right now. How do we generate uh, or visualize data? Uh, and if you look at the domain of architecture, um, perhaps a house is the most expensive thing that we might by in our lifetime. Uh, so it's it's a very, um, I would say, expensive endeavor to to, uh, to go through the process of a design of a building and implementing it. So they need a very good visualization of uh, design ideas. Uh, and I think in, uh, in, in this context, computer vision and computer graphics are very important to help designers uh, to bring in uh, their design ideas and their imagination into uh, into present so that they can present uh, their um, ideas to uh, people, to, to different stakeholders, not only the users but also the policy makers, 
uh, urban planners, etc. So I'm at a very interdisciplinary intersection of computer graphics, computer vision, and architectural design at the same time, uh, computer science as, as an umbrella for uh, this whole. So nice, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And finally, Noshaba, please. Noshaba is the, the young researcher, probably the youngest in the panel. Thank yeah. you. Hi, my name is Nushaba, and thanks for having me. Thanks for inviting. Um, I'm also not really from this community, although I know a lot of people in this community. Um, my main focus is also, just like Professor Zern, in um, animation. <laughs> OK. So I don't know how far I should go back. <laughs> um, since I'm an early career researcher, I guess I could go start from a bachelor's or something, maybe. So I initially didn't really, I was initially kind of afraid of going into computer science. Um, I wanted to do something with computer games or, well, computer, or like, let's say, game design. But then I thought, OK, maybe, maybe there's not, maybe there isn't too much money in it <laughs> or something. Then I looked into programming, and I enjoyed it a lot. So I started with creating my own games. Then I started with creating my own game engine, then my physics engine, because I was so interested in that. And then um, my bachelor thesis was also around 2012, 13, when the deep learning stuff hit, right? So um, it was about image synthesis, uh, mainly about, um, well, synthesizing, well, synthesizing textures, essentially, but um, from a Fovead point of view, sort of. And then um, from there, I went into a mas the master's program at MPI. And um, there, I wrote two master's theses, one in, well, motion segmentation, which got a best poster award at SCA, and then um, another, Chi paper, another master's thesis with Aalto University, uh, which won the Telecom STEM award about um, well, with reinforcement learning for animation, mainly about arm synthesis for, um, well, let's say, uh, gest gesture synthesis. But now I am looking into um, full body synthesis, mainly looking into what can be done outside of data. So you are looking into like what can be done with data, right? But I'm more interested in, into novel stuff that, that, ha that is not within the data. For example, our recent submission was about um, synthesizing fatigued movements over time, and we did not capture these motions. These were all, emer these were all imagined behavior. These were all discovered by the agent itself. And, um, and my current project is um, going further into this direction, looking into what can be done, for example, with intrinsic motivation, which is a concept in reinforcement learning. Um, based on, let's say, novel rewards or um, um, increasing entropy within the motion. And the difficulty there lies into how do we make this motion look still natural. So there can be a lot of diversity, right? Anything, can, anything essentially can emerge, but how do you make it look natural for animators? OK, um, well, thanks. Um, now I'm going to the second question. I actually will put two questions in one. Um, the other, uh, so I would like that you mention about what inspired you to become a uh, researcher in the technology field. But if you, <laughs> Noshab already talked about I talked a little bit, <laughs> but uh, you could also um, maybe convince this audience what is the importance of having women in the field in the research uh, uh, the research groups or. OK, so shall I start? Yeah, OK. Uh, so first of all, what inspired <coughs> me? I think it was a pretty natural process, I have to say. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm originally from Turkey. So um, you know, when you are going to high school, you have to make a choice whether you go to the social sciences or the um, exact sciences. Um, I was a good student, obviously, <laughs> and, um, and I, I was more interested in exact sciences. That's I realized, I think consciously at an early age, that I want to pursue this line of um, uh, studies. Uh, and I enjoyed it uh, a lot, uh, actually, which uh, yeah, started my journey as an uh, engineer. And uh, at first, uh, I didn't really have uh, in mind uh, 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 to be a scientist. I always admired that, but that was not the first idea. I think m many of uh, you can relate to, to that as well, this choice between uh, industry and academy. 
Um, but then when I stepped into, um, yeah, uh, into the world of uh, science uh, as a research assistant, um, I, I thought this is for me. Uh, it's really like curiosity, um, discovering things, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of things to learn and explore, and I thought I think I should spend my time, uh, my life, on something more meaningful. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, that was that was a choice that I uh, started to, to make uh, at an early age, I think. You mentioned to me before that mm -hmm. you went to many different research centers during your life. Right? That is true, yes. Um, I was um, um, in Turkey first, uh, I did my master's there, and then um, I, I also do, did different majors, industrial engineering and computer science. And, and then I went for my PhDs to Switzerland. I was in the University of Geneva and the EPFL uh, for my postdoc. And I went to uh, Singapore. Uh, I have been in uh, two and a half years in Asia. Um, and it was a very interesting experience as well. And it's Nanyang Technological University, one of the top engineering schools, uh, yeah, together with EPFL as well. Um, so that gave me, of course, a lot of different perspective, uh, and I have met a lot of inspiring people on the road. So that was really, really nice to to see. And yeah. your second question? Uh, the second question was uh, yeah. uh, the importance about women in, yeah. in the field. Um, yeah, I think. Um, okay, l l let's let's start with a little bit the challenges, and then I will I will turn it into to uh, wh why having women is important. Um, so first of all, uh, in this field, somehow, uh, there is not enough women as we, <laughs> we see the audience here as well. Um, this is difficult to identify, but what are the reasons for that? I'm in the um, um, uh, Equity, Diversity and Inclusion Committee of our department and we're discussing these things a lot. There are a lot of articles about this, what, why this is happening. Uh, and it's really difficult to, to, to find out. But I can say from my personal experience that from an uh, early, early age, I remember, for example, when I was doing my PhD, there was like only one or two women in the whole lab. <laughs> so that, that was kind of always the, the, the setup uh, in, in engineering t schools that I have been, and there was not really enough, enough uh, women. Um, and I think uh, there is a lack of uh, role models in, in, this, in this area. Uh, so uh, it's not only men or a certain um, group of people that can do engineering, math, science, or th things like that, but there is more a need for role mod models, different type of role models, not only women, but uh, a diversity of people are, are needed uh, in, in this area. And the importance is actually, I think, we kind of reflect this area very well as well, because we work on inter interdisciplinary uh, areas of computer graphics, animation, architecture, and that requires different type of um, uh, thinking processes. Um, it's it's uh, um, uh, different viewpoints and different expertise is needed. And possibly, or probably, I'm not really sure uh, of the answer, but maybe women are more um, into more holistic thinking, not only on the um, uh, one type of uh, task, but um, uh, making connections between different areas. I don't want to um, yeah, restrict it to only one woman. I think there are a lot of very good uh, uh, male scientists as well that do interdisciplinary research. Um, but somehow I think there is, uh, there is an um, yeah, inclination on in that direction. Yeah, I completely <laughs> agree with you. <laughs> okay, Sarah. I think that the first question was what, what actually... What inspired you for... Yes, uh, I think uh, if I really look back, it's it wasn't technology, so it was <laughs> science uh, for me. It was a safe haven to understand the world. Uh, and uh, stepping into computer science, maybe um, by chance, I realized that, that there is a small gap between product and, and science, so you can basically start your own product as you did also, uh, uh, creating stuff easily with code, you don't have a lot of infrastructure. Uh, and I think it's uh, nice for impatient people to actually see the outcome of uh, science. So that was one way actually to, to <coughs> um, and close the loop, uh, to, to, to see how science can contribute to the everyday, everyday uh, life of people. Um, and as I said, so uh, not only technology, but I think data is uh, fascinating. I think how can we support uh, different kind of decision making uh, and how can we m use technology uh, to make the, this the world a better place, basically. Um, that was 
a bit my, uh, let's say, introduction to science and technology. Um, and I'm very happy that uh, here at Delft we have the opportunity and we have the chance to explore uh, our curiosity uh, with, with lots of support. Uh, and I'm very happy, I think there are lots of challenges of being uh, odd anyway in any context, being a woman in computer science being one of them. Uh, but uh, it's also uh, nice to get lots of support. Uh, I mean, there have been challenges, but also opportunities for, for women in computer science. And this has been supported very well, I think, uh, in the community, uh, I can say. Uh, coming from Middle East, definitely that's the case here. Um, and I think, why do we need this? I mean, um, again, I am a female in computer science, which uh, maybe is a bit underrepresented, but uh, going to the architecture, there is a better, let's say, gender um, balance in there. However, there is lack of international, uh, I would say, students and, and researchers. So there is a different kind of diversity. And you see that when you have uh, imbalance or underrepresentation in maybe in a very severe way, then you see that the one point of view dominates. And that blocks the way for creation and innovation. Uh, and that's why we need diversity, we need different point of view, uh, being women, being people from different backgrounds, from different cultures, uh, and that brings new way of doing things, uh, because we, we have different brains, we have different trainings, we have different backgrounds, and I think it's important to have these point of views to avoid any uh, sort of harmful biases at the end, because again, technology is really at the front end of what people use every day, and we want to avoid certain biases to make sure that everyone enjoys uh, the outcome of uh, our research, our, uh, our efforts. Nice. <laughs> Thank you, Nashana. Yeah, I mean, I talked a bit already about like um, what motivated me, but I can <coughs> talk a bit more about this. So it's interesting because you guys said that you wanted to like, you know, that technology interested your science. For me, it was like art interested me. Like I always drew. I always like uh, I started with like learning Photoshop or something for um, uh, f uh, well for you know, character design, etc. I wanted to create my own char game characters, and I loved gaming, and that's how I got <laughs> into computer, computer science. I never really thought that I would really be a researcher, but then, I don't know, I wanted to create my own, well, I started with creating my own engines, and then I wanted to learn more and more about this, like how does this stuff work? So through my own curiosity, I got into research. It, it was just natural. And um, what I really like about research is you know that, for example, the stuff that I'm researching right now is is basically well curiosity-driven learning, right? So with intrinsic motivation, and um, um, I mean, well, it, it combines a lot of things because, for example, I'm also like I also love dancing. I'm a dancer, so I feel like dance is like the perfect use case for for this type of well animation of work, because it is only intrinsically motivated, like almost only, at least when it comes to improvisational dances. And I feel like this is also like an example why um, a female mind sort of um, is helpful also like in this, uh, within this field, because um, a lot of ideas from reinforced learning also come from psychology. And uh, we, so I led, in my first year, I led a grant proposal it wasn't like a. It wasn't even a small grant proposal. It was a grant of three million euros, and um, the 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 um, so the <laughs> sorry. Mm -hmm. The main focus there was social interaction in VR, and we got. And our main use case was actually dancing because I w because I wanted to make it about intrinsic motivation. That was just the perfect use case. It it combines social interaction. It combines um, difficult movements and combines um, well. Um, Creativity, intrinsic motivation, it's, yeah, it was. Okay. Um, all right, so let's uh, go for another topic and then I'll open for the audience if you want to ask something. Uh, so, it's, um, what, is some, uh, what uh, are some of uh, the exciting things? I'm um, sorry, uh, what advice would you give to other women who are 
uh, interested on pursuing the same career as yours? Yeah, yeah. that's a good question to, to conclude. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so what advice? Um, th I think there, there I, I thought about it a little bit, of course, uh, uh, apparently before before coming here. What could be useful for the for the audience? Um, I think it's difficult to give a recipe, right? So it's it depends on the person. I think it really depends on you knowing yourself best, what you want to achieve in life, what you enjoy, where you want to spend your time. Uh, things like that are important, but I think um, finding role models is really important. Like try to team up with people, find allies, um, and enjoy the process together with these people. And if you are kind of distracted on the way, or there's some sort of uh, things doesn't go as you are, you are expecting, don't be discouraged ab about that. Put your goals and uh, work towards the, the, this goal. Um, because yeah, sometimes you are not maybe talking to the right people. Um, uh, you need to find uh, yeah y your people. The second thing I find really important, of course, is both male and um, female, but uh, I think your close circle is really important, who you are uh, spending your life with. It could be your family, your partner, your close friends. Um, try to keep around inspiring people. Uh, that really helps you uh, to to yeah achieve achieve your goals um, and uh, yeah to enjoy this this process at the end. Okay. Yeah, I think that those are very uh, useful. I think advices. Um, what I can add is um, not not anything specific. Just trust yourself. Um, and the reason that the the, the reason that you're doing something differently doesn't mean that it's uh, wrong or it has to uh, go inside you know the this norm that has been defined uh, stay away from a stereotype it's your own way you can find uh, your own way and uh, yeah don't be discouraged because uh, again it's about diversity people think differently they have different approaches they, they have different understanding of the word yours is unique so uh, i'm sure if you put uh, the effort and the interest that you think you find in yourself, you'll find uh, uh, some place uh, that that you can serve uh, the, the the community or or your own interests. So don't be discouraged. Trust yourself. Yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think these are very good advices. I think as long as you do something that you really enjoy and love, you're gonna get somewhere. That's what I think, right? So I started with art, but then I got into this field, so, and I really enjoy it, so. Mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> okay, so I think now we have some time for the audience uh, uh, questions and uh, po points of view. You want to comment something else, it's more than welcome. Uh, there's a microphone for <laughs> Thank you. Um, I was struck uh, listening a bit embarrassed on, on, on behalf of this sort of field that all of you mentioned you were from adjacent fields but not necessarily familiar to the sort of high performance graphics crowd and obviously it's a very male audience. So my question is basically around what levers we can pull as aging out white you know, male people, um, what we can do to improve the diversity of opinions and, and backgrounds. The one that I was aware of before this talk was maybe people hiring, you look for different voices, you look for different backgrounds. But I was also struck by all of you talking about interdisciplinary, sorry, the interdisciplinary side of things. Is there something that the HPG community could do to improve those connections to like other disciplines and that might help diversity of opinions? And yeah, it's a general question, but mm -hmm. I'm curious how we can help yeah. improve diversity. That's a very interesting question. Actually, that's something the diversity track also is thinking during these years in the HPG. So, well, do <laughs> you have some comments? Yeah, that's a great question, I think. Um, well, it's of course relevant for this community, but in general to attract women in, in computer science. Uh, I have met myself uh, very inspiring male colleagues on the way that are sometimes even more inspiring than female colleagues, so it, it really depends, right? So in, in the, uh, the, the person, the personality. Um, so, um, yeah, I think what could be interesting is, I think, to um, have an open conversation with, with uh, female colleagues. What are they thinking? Uh, what are their inspirations? What kind of contribution they want to, to, to give to the field ra rather than just expecting the norm <laughs> uh, and be open-minded? 
I think that is the key in, in everywhere. So how, how these people can bring something different on the table. Um, so I, I think that is the simplest thing to do, right? Have a friendly, open conversation. Yeah. Right. This completely makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the, the conversation is the key. Uh, but I think there's also a, this mindset and maybe a, a culture that needs to be um, worked on uh, is, is seeing the, the science as well as people doing science as a spectrum, uh, not as categories, female, male, uh, computer science, graphics. So we are really at the intersection of all these things uh, and seeing that, okay, some, some parts are maybe more um, easier to handle with more feminine approach than the other sides uh, and the same with uh, solving a problem whether this is uh, really within the core of a discipline or at, th at the boundary of different disciplines and being open because uh, I feel uh, or I, I kind of mm, yeah I feel like this discipline thing it comes really from our bottom of you know identity that we have if you work uh, long enough in in uh, academia i think that this feeling that okay i belong to this community and it's a uh, it's difficult to uh, sort of work on on the this uh, fluid uh, status of this identity i think this is important to 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 play with it a bit to to challenge yourself about the biases that uh, that we might have uh, in different areas whether it's about our discipline is this computer vision or computer graphic or is this mm -hmm. visual you know these kind of things and being open to actually see it from a different angle i think that helps a lot mm -hmm. that's uh, coming from when the you that work in architecture <laughs> i mean it's mm -hmm. impossible not to do that right yeah true <laughs> I mean, a lot of things are already said. I don't even know what to say more, technically. Um, yeah, it's interesting to see because generally when it comes to computer science, I feel like, I think there are like 30% graduates who are women, right? But then here I don't see any women. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not even th a third or even just 10% uh, or something. And that's a very interesting um, observation. And I feel like it's still a lot about you know, that maybe uh, women need to also look and get, like you have to get them more interested also to the hardware side maybe, you know, or the low level uh, uh, programming side maybe and find like, okay, like beauty there, right? Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. What topics you think that uh, if we include an HPG <laughs> would uh, attract <laughs> more women? I mean, <laughs> but well, um, I mean, you already do rendering, right? So rendering is already pretty nice. It's just that a lot of the papers then also get accepted to SIGGRAPH or EGSR. Then some some other synthesis papers are then also accepted to CBPR and. ECCV, right? So when it comes to hardware programming, um, I don't know, like how, uh, I feel like if you visualize it super nice, if you're able to visualize it n nicely, you will get a lot more attention. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I think we have a uh, question here. Dave. I'm wondering if, if any of the three of you can can identify a, a moment when you were inspired in, in a direction that led you here. So, um, to, to give us an example of, of how to inspire uh, people who follow after us. So, so for example, I, I grew up with the mindset that in this family we get bachelor's degrees. Um, turns out that wasn't even accurate. Turns out none of my grandparents ever, ever went to college, mm -hmm. but both my parents did. And so I just grew up thinking, I'm going to get a bachelor's degree. That's what I'm capable of, and that's what I'm going to do. And then around the time I was finishing my bachelor's degree, my mother informed me that I could get a master's or a PhD. I'd, I'd never thought I was the type of person who could, who could or would do that. And, uh, and so she's the only person who ever told me I was someone who could go to grad school. So I'm wondering if, if any of you have 
in, any examples of inspiring moments that, that might uh, help us spot such opportunities to inspire people in the future? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, uh, there are many moments I think uh, like that. But the first moment for me was uh, uh, I had a university teacher. Uh, she was a very inspiring role model for me. She was a, a professor herself um, and uh, in, in, in engineering and she was doing uh, optimization type of uh, work. And uh, yeah, the, she was also a um, um, yeah, manager in the academic area, you know, like department head, uh, rector, vice rector, things like that. Um, so that kind of really inspired me, I think, the way she was uh, um, um, able to carry herself in the, in the academic world and uh, position your, herself as a strong woman, that was a, that was a good moment. Uh, from family side, uh, my parents were always very supportive. Um, um, coming from a Turkish background, I have a really, really, we are three sisters, so there was always support for women in, in my family. Um, uh, but admittedly, my, my uh, parents uh, didn't have any university education. So I'm a first generation uh, student, which adds extra uh, challenge on top of being a woman in this area. Um, and um, I can say that uh, yeah, there were a lot of um, male and female colleagues on the way uh, that inspired me either in the way that they were um, supportive or the work that they were doing was very, very inspiring or I also get inspired by uh, the work of people that I didn't know at all. That's also very important, right? Reading the work and getting deeply into the lives of these people, what made them come there. Uh, I read a lot of biographies as well from other people which really I think kind of inspiring and helpful to find your way. Um, so if you cannot find these people in the vicinity, look beyond, you will find, <laughs> find them somewhere, especially in this era of connected world, <laughs> everywhere, you will find them. Uh, well, for me, I think uh, it was mostly intrinsic. So I've always looked what actually interests me and then trying to make that profile somehow convincing people that this is what we need to do. Um, but uh, I think for sure, when I started going to the conferences, let's say from uh, after my master's, uh, and I saw uh, people with different profiles, especially uh, female role models, I think they were really inspiring me that this is, this is a space uh, for uh, all kind of approaches to science, to mathematics, to programming, even though that the stereotype might look like different or they might act different uh, if you are passionate enough I think you could so I think it's important to have different role models here in this place as PhDs are coming here and then they say okay uh, yeah you could you could be uh, that person that you want to be I guess um, for me Inspiring people came much, much later, actually, when I started my PhD, so that was would be probably Sebastian Starke or Jason Peng, you know, mm -hmm. those are my role models. But before that, the motivation was mainly in, like, you know, seeing things move. So I wanted to always, like, create my own worlds. So um, as soon as something worked, I was super happy. Or, like, whenever my character were, um, walked or something, like, just that just made me super happy. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, we have one question there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, first, thank you for answering so many questions already. Um, I wanted to ask, when I started my bachelor's, which was here at the TU Delft uh, in computer science, uh, we had like five women on a population of 300, so <laughs> awkward. <laughs> Um, but I always noticed that that was not necessarily the case for adjacent fields. We shared a lot of space with the mathematics department, for example, where, to my understanding, that was not the case. Uh, now, I don't know why. I haven't the fog used, but I wanted to ask, uh, are there other fields, or do you recognize other fields, which might have, at one point, had this challenge, this diversity challenge, and manage to overcome it, or are there other fields that you think we can learn from? Like, mm -hmm. not necessarily saying mathematics, uh, but any examples of this? Um, yeah, just go ahead. Uh, well, uh, I think I just mentioned, for example, architecture, especially uh, 
artistic architecture is quite female even dominated but if you go up uh, on the ladder it comes to the to this managerial position then you see again the bias starts taking off which uh, shows that still the evaluation system is set up to amplify those biases so I think um, and and they are trying to bring in uh, more uh, female uh, researchers in into uh, let's say uh, higher positions in academia to be able to to tackle this I think all we we know that this uh, mm, well positive discrimination is one way to sort of reinforce it uh, not only for female but all kind of diversity um, is, is important uh, and I think the other way around so in maybe in uh, some other disciplines it's the other way around so it's uh, more uh, female uh, let's say dominated and then uh, I think seeing in and uh, really bringing uh, this uh, let's say underrepresented uh, mm, people uh, will help a lot so if you see in dance uh, lots of uh, male dancers I mean then it's not odd anymore it's not weird to be a male dancer if you're a female engineer a female computer scientist and there are lots of them then you see okay I'm, I'm part of a community so this sense of being be ha like having this connection with the community is very mm -hmm. important yeah I can uh, yes add, add to that actually in our department when I started in 2015 I think there were like three women something like that and then our department started to hire a lot of female in the last couple of years and we are trying to balance these numbers uh, right now which makes it a completely different environment it's much more supportive you feel much more at home uh, you enjoy more being in the department things like that so it has a very very positive impact I have to say uh, but coming up to your question on mathematics and computer science, what we can do there, I remember one report from some university in Australia working on diversity, and they were looking into this problem. Of course, it's a speculation, but it made sense a little bit. Computer science is a very young field. It started with programming, right, in these uh, old days with like Microsoft garages, <laughs> things like that, like a little bit of a different profile uh, of, um, uh, yeah, uh, the so software engineers and programmers. And uh, for mathematics, probably at the early ages, it was the same situation, but it's a much older field of study and maybe things improved uh, on, on the go. But computer science is still a young field and it, I think we should do some deliberate efforts to attract uh, women uh, there and that there's no, not like a single stereotype that uh, uh, fits to computer scientist uh, profile. One more question? bit of a pipeline problem mm -hmm. and uh, so do you guys have any ideas for how to attract uh, young girls into this field because it's almost too late in college like mm -hmm. to, not not too late but like it it would be easier if people were interested earlier yeah um, mm -hmm. I mean as I already mentioned you know the graduates in computer science the female percentage is 30 percent but there are not 30% of women here, so I don't think the college is too late, right? So you gotta sell the hardware component a bit better, to, or like the low-level programming parts a bit better to the girls that are already in college in computer science until you get to 30%, and then you can think about what you can do in high school. Yeah, something maybe I can add on, on top of that is, of course, we are always talking about what can we do for the girls, but I think girls can also think for themselves what is interesting in, in this field for me and uh, how I can um, see a relevant role model and how I can contribute to this field, like rather than just uh, sketching a computer scientist profile that is very standard. If from early age, like, you know, like uh, even elementary school, you start with um, um, introducing the capabilities of computer science, computer graphics in general, uh, and the, the beauty of it, right, from a more female perspective, uh, and make it attractive uh, for women, 
because things that attract men and women are the different things. That is the main <laughs> distinction, I think. And at the early age, then women probably deviate to other directions. On top of there are like maybe a challenge, ch other challenges like uh, discouragement, things like that. Um, so the woman that usually survive in this field is, I use the word survive because sometimes it goes for <laughs> survival category. Um, you have to um, kind of find uh, things that are motivating you on a daily basis in this field, uh, at a personal level. I think that is very, very important for girls, for women in general uh, to think of. I think yeah, uh, I want to add something because I also started to thinking about maybe the way that we teach actually uh, programming, a computer and, and maths behind it, uh, it's tailored towards uh, a bit male uh, brain. That's why we need to teach it differently already from mm -hmm. elementary school. Why is that uh, um, boys are more interested in maths? I mean, uh, apart from the stereotype, maybe there's something in the... No, we know that there are different learner pro profiles. I mean, people learn differently. And maybe the way that we actually design this curriculum, it's uh, towards uh, reinforcing this bias. Yeah. But uh, we need data for that, and uh, I think people are should work actually on that part as well. Yeah, actually on this note, I think if I had done a normal undergrad degree in computer science, my undergrad degree was in, degree was in media informatics, so already a combination of, well, media design and computer science, right? If I had gotten into a normal computer science program, I'm not sure if I had, would have finished it. I'm not sure if I would have enjoyed it. In the media and computer science field, I started with uh, programming games or like with something visual that I could see, okay, it's doing something, right? It's giving me uh, input or like um, some feedback. And that, that what, uh, that's what motivated my curiosity even more to look into deeper, like look into this deeper, et cetera. Then so through this, I got into, well, deep learning, and then, um, well, now reinforcement learning and doing a PhD in this field. Um, I think if I had started a normal computer science degree, I'm not sure if I would have gotten here. Okay, I think uh, we are almost <laughs> on time for finishing the panel, uh, this wonderful panel, so I think I will just invite you for give a final message. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think the final message for me would be that um, women should turn this process something enjoyable for them. Enjoyable and happy and um, uh, learning and curiosity. So uh, really try to, to find your thing, your place, and uh, don't be afraid of being uh, courageous and uh, take the extra leap when you have to do so. If you have to learn hard stuff, you should also learn that. <laughs> That's also important because there's never easy thing. You have to also feel the pain while learning things. So you have to f have to, to take the extra step as well, but also enjoy the, the longer process. I think it's the same for everybody, not only for women. <laughs> yes, well, if I look at the audience here, uh, I would have a different message if uh, it was a room full of uh, female researchers, but I think we should do this together. So uh, we need your support. We need you to understand the way uh, that um, female uh, researchers, uh, especially in academia, uh, can make uh, their own ways. Uh, we are in charge of other things, uh, among them reproduction as well. So uh, I think it's important to understand that, uh, that the situation and, and uh, get enough support from you. Um. <laughs> um. So we're just... Final message? Yeah, yeah my final <laughs> message, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I guess my final message, message is really do something that you're passionate about. And in order to get more girls, well, um, I mean, making things attractive towards them, I guess, I guess that that is something that we need to do. Um, but I think there's, there's, there's something in this field for everybody, right? So you can, I feel like, especially nowadays, computer science or like computer graphics, let's say computer science, um, you can find your niche in anything. So if you love music, you can use computer science to do music, right? Or if you love, well, in my case, it's dancing, right? You can do that to synthesize dance, whatever. Or if you like gaming, etc. So there's something that, that motivated you guys to pursue this career, right? And there's something for everybody in this field. So 
So that's my final remark. Okay, thank you very much. And so let's give a huge applause for these wonderful <laughs> panelists. <laughs> thank you very much. And after lunch, we will have this wonderful uh, short course about Vulcan. So don't uh, lose this. Uh, all you need to know about Vulcan. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you very much. It's a look.